Hello. So, this year for Halloween, I decided to build the Ghostbusters Ecto-1 by uh, AMT in 125th scale. Now, I got this kit uh, secondhand from eBay. Uh, it goes for a lot of money firsthand uh, in the UK. I got this for £25 on eBay, which is fairly good, but unfortunately it was in fairly bad condition. A lot of parts had been removed from the sprue, the decals were in really bad condition. Fortunately one of the parts missing was one of the tail fins, an iconic part of any Cadillac from the 1950s, so I knew that I'd have to make another one of those. As you can see here, there's a load of parts that had just been removed from the sprues and jumbled into a big bag. And I did then discovered that some were damaged, like one of the tyres, and uh, some, like the entire clear red sprue, was completely missing. Annoyingly, the headlights are moulded into the chrome at the front. I think it would be really nice for a company to bring out a new version of this. The bodywork here of the 1959 Cadillac Meteor Miller is pretty recognisable, and you can see some moulded detail like the windscreen wipers at the front. Let's get started. So as I said, the first thing to do is to look at the tail fin here. I decided what I'd do is I'd try to make another one out of sheet styrene. So I put some 1.8mm Tamiya tape over the top and then cut that as closely as I could with a nice sharp craft blade. I then coloured that in and then transferred that to some 0.5mm sheet styrene. Use a nice new craft blade and this ruler to cut out as straight a piece as possible. And I think that's fairly good. I cut another thinner part to go along the top to give it a bit of thickness. And then I sanded away the mould seams. There's a few around the uh, rear here. The kit is designed as 1A, which is the car from Ghostbusters 2, but as I wanted to make the Ecto-1, one of the things I needed to do was to remove these six clip points on the sides and sand these down. As I discovered later, this wasn't the only feature that uh, needed to be changed. Here it was after being painted white with the red tail fin. I then masked off the whole thing to add the rest of the red. They go round to the back here, and helpfully there are some raised lines to show you where exactly these need to be marked. I have to say, if you're using the decals in the kit, they're not actually big enough, so I do recommend painting this. Here it is with three coats of Tamiya Bright Red, which I felt matched the decals well. There was a little bit of a bleed around the windscreen here, which I'll uh, remove later. There we are. That's pretty good around the back. A bit of a bleed here. I used a tiny amount of Tamiya polish to remove this and then tried to clean it up as best as possible so that there wasn't any polish left on the bodywork before clear coating it later. Now this kit is only 11 years old but the decals had been kept in a really bad condition and um, I found the only way to remove them from the backing was to put them into very hot water, almost boiling. Leave them for about 15 seconds. Here I'm putting down some micro set and then I used a brand new craft blade to very, very carefully peel them up from the uh, backing paper. Do be careful when doing this. I recommend practicing on a decal which you're not going to use first before then going on to something more important like the ghost logo here. I decided I was going to do the car looking dirty so I chose to do the chrome trim using Ravel silver paint rather than an actual chrome. Makes it look a little bit dirty, a bit tarnished. Here I'm using some Tamiya um, curved masking tape to do along the roof and the windscreen line. It's pretty good. And then along the bonnet here. There's a little bleed, but fortunately acrylic paint like this can be scratched away quite easily with a toothpick if it's fresh. Interior was all done in matte black, and then I went over the floor with some Ravel iron. 
I did some of the instruments in silver as well. And the lower halves of the door cards in this kind of stone grey. The interior is fairly detailed. It's got some door handles, which I touched up using this silver Posca paint pen. You won't see much of this once the body is on, so I won't uh, go to town on it. Posca paint pens were useful for detailing some of the consoles. The computer monitor I chose to do in stone grey and then a pale green uh, sharpie was used for the uh, screen. I also did the keyboard below it in stone grey. Dashboard was all done in matte black and then I added details again with the Posca paint pen. The dry time on these pens is pretty slow so if you make a mistake it's quite easy to clean up so I do recommend them. There's a few other things that need to go on the dashboard, such as a radio. And then you've got the steering column here and the steering wheel on top. It says it's supposed to be black, but it looked more gray brown when I watched the film back. So that's what I've gone for with a metallic silver in the middle. There's a little mobile phone which goes in the middle very very flash for 1984 to have a mobile phone in your car and there we have it now you've got two light bars like this if you're doing the second film this needs to be clear but the first film has blue on the outside of both with then silver in the middle i'm using tamiya clear blue for this now this is quite slow to dry, so um, I'm gonna leave this for a couple of days before I come back to it. Now the underside here has also been done in matte black and I've added some details, opened up the exhaust pipes uh, with some iron on the exhausts. And now I'm dry brushing on some Revell rust and then some Humbrol uh, rust weathering powder. Now here are the tyres, you can see this one is really, really damaged. I chose to do white walls, um, fairly simply, just with a brush and some Revell matte white paint. I know it looks a little bit scruffy, but uh, I'm going to be weathering these anyway. Here I'm using some dark rust weathering powder, looks quite a bit like mud. Now for the wheels, you've got two metal axles, very little detail mechanically on this car. They're a little tough to get into place, but if you push them down like so. Now here's a tip, don't put the car together like so, because you'll only be able to get the front wheels on, and even that's not that easy, because the rear wheels have got those uh, spats, I think they're called. So really, the rear wheels need to be attached to the chassis like this when it's separate to the rest of the car. And there we have it, this part that no one will see ever again. The kit is for the Ecto-1A shown below, and the Ecto-1 is actually quite different. So I studied as many pictures as I could to try and work out what needed to be removed or replaced. The roof rack here needs to have its front and rear sections removed, and it also needs to be slightly shortened. I painted this all matte white, and then I chose to go over the uh, bars in matte black. You can see here how it will go together. Just using some Revell matte black uh, acrylic paint to add those details. 
The reason it needs to be shortened is that it's raised up a little bit to go above the Ghostbusters signs which go on the side. However, as I'm not using those, it will stand out too much. They're pretty happy with that. Now on the other side, you've got these two yellow gas canisters. I'm using some Ravel Satin Yellow for that and I'm pretty happy. And then it goes together like so. I'm going to add some more details to this to make it look more like the one used in the first film. For instance, later on I'll choose to remove the two radio antenna at the front, as they weren't present. But some things like the yellow tanks on the side and the green tank on the other side are present in all of the films. Got this little computer box on this side. In the film it has lots of wires coming out of it, so I'll add some of those later on. And again, this canister on the side seems to be in lots of different colours, but it's normally a green or a yellow. Another thing present in both films is this little radar satellite dish thing. Very careful when gluing on the clear part. I use the top of a super glue lid for this little radar dome thing. And here I'm just giving a little weather dry brushing on some silver to look like scratches. Use a bit of yellow and black decal around the back of the radar dish and uh, then these other decals. Again, just like before, I needed to use very, very hot water to get this off the backing paper. Now the window has a little strip around it which uh, is supposed to be clear, the rest is supposed to be tinted or even blacked out completely. I used some Tamiya smoke for this. It gave a little bit of a patchy finish but uh, it looks a bit kind of dirty and since that's the look I'm going for I don't think it's too bad. You may want to leave this off. must say that it's not the best uh, clear part, it's very thick fits in like one piece like so. You've got a broad uh, rear view mirror thing. I think these are called panoramic rear view mirrors that glues in at the top and then the interior goes in like so. No glue was needed for any of these things. And the underside clips in at the back and kind of gets clasped around the sides. There we are. Now I added some black panel line accents to add depth and uh, I chose not to uh, remove the decal here, instead just cutting around the edge and then using some white glue to fit it onto the uh, bumper like so and this glues underneath. I used some super glue to uh, fit this into place. Now here the light bar is now all painted and I did the center in silver. Here I'm just using a little bit of uh, foam safe super glue to fit that in carefully from the underside. And there's clips for this one to be attached at the front. The rear one, uh, if you're doing the Ecto-1, there isn't clips, so just good to do that generally in the right position. You've got a little wing mirror at the back here, and these little extra blue lights at the front. I removed the uh, pinpoint hole at the bottom and just super glued these onto the squares which are on the roof. Now for the fin, you've got this little chrome part which goes on like so. Unfortunately, the one on the other side was slightly broken. So what I did was I used part of a cocktail stick and then covered that with aluminium tape. And it's uh, given a fairly good uh, finish, I think. Now this is the rear bumper used in the second film. The first one should look more like this. So I tried to see if I could replicate it. 
Firstly, I removed most of the step at the bottom by clipping it away. Then tried to sand that smooth as best as possible. I tried simply covering this with aluminium tape, but it left too much of the texture exposed and uh, it didn't look good. So I cut out some sheet styrene to the right sort of size and then taped that over the top. And uh, it's not perfect, but it's much better. Now also these red clear parts at the back were missing. So I cut out a bit of this lid from this takeaway food box, colored them red with some red Sharpie and fitted them into place like so. Now the bullet shaped tail lights were also missing. So I held some uh, clear sprue over the top of a candle and stretched it to this sort of cone shape, then cut them to size and then super glued them onto place. Also colored them red with a little bit of a red Sharpie. They weren't perfect, but considering that these were completely missing, it's a, a good alternative. There we are, rear bumper. Now I found that this didn't fit very well, especially with the fin that I'd fabricated. So unfortunately there's a couple of gaps, but um, still, it's okay. Now the first version also has a ladder on one side. So again, I got out the sheet styrene, cut it into uh, thin strips, about two millimeters wide, and then um, used some uh, poly cement just to attach those all together. When I was happy with the amount of rungs, it was all painted in satin black, and then I attached that on later. Now there's some extra lights and things that need to go on the top, so I dipped into the spares box, found this little uh, red one here, and there's also this little wing mirror, which I've used in place of the uh, siren at the front. Added some wires to the side, there's the staircase. Now these pipes, which were painted blue, that go on the side, they should be hidden under the uh, Ghostbusters we're back signs on the side, but of course they're not there, so they're too short. So I found some plastic straw, it was pink, so I painted it blue and then used that to extend the pipes. It's not perfect, but most of it is hidden under the roof rack like you can see, uh, so you know, needs must. Next, we've got this radiation scanner thing that goes on the top, using some styrene tube and a little box that I found in the spares box, closing up the end of that and then painting it all red. I then made a little hole in the bottom of that and this the canister, which um, I repurposed, put decal on the side and a little bit of a sort of one millimeter metal rod so that, that uh, can twist and turn. Yeah, pretty happy with that. And there it is with the straws underneath. Now I'm gonna weather the car. I'm gonna first use some dark rust to uh, make it look a bit rusty, a bit dirty around places. And then some Humbrol black wash. This is kind of granular. And uh, I think it looks more like it's been used in the uh, sort of uh, autumn and winter of New York when the films were set. I didn't want to overdo it, but uh, I also didn't want the uh, sills of the car and those white wall tires to look too fresh. Finally, the radio aerial. The one in the kit is far too thick, so instead I'm using some of this florist's wire. I stretched it around um, uh, tweezers to create that little coil bit and then used some super glue, bent over the uh, large um, bit to fold it into the top. And there we have it, Ecto-1. A turned into Ecto-1, thanks to a lot of scratch building by me. And now for the Bob score. Value, well, this is no longer in production, but over 50 pounds is far too much for this kit. I'm gonna give it a two. For assembly, a lot of it goes together without the need for any glue, but the fitment in places isn't great. I'm gonna give it a three. Accuracy, good for the 1A, not for the one, and also no engine, no working suspension. I'm gonna give it a two quality, no real headlights at the front, 
and it just feels a bit cheap. I'm going to give it a 2. For Legacy, it's arguably one of the most famous film cars of all time, certainly one of the most famous Cadillacs, so I'm going to give it a 5. That gives the Ecto 1A a total of 14 out of 25, which isn't great. Let me know down below if you agree with me. Have you built one of these before? Let me know what you think. Thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. I'll see you soon.